everyone. Today we are reviewing the Stex Throttle from VKB. This is exciting as this is the first hardware review on the channel. And we are lucky because I also have the Verpal Mongoose 3 Throttle so we can compare the two. Before we hop into it, if this is your first time here, this channel focuses on multiplayer sim gameplay. So if you're into that, please subscribe. I know a lot of creators and viewers skip this part, but it's actually important. I would like to remind everyone that these disclosures are the law and they are just a good thing to do because not doing it is scummy in my book. The way I see it, a peripheral for a simulation game is something that you are going to rely on a lot and they can get quite expensive. You should know what you are getting yourself into and base it off honest reviews. Channels that do not disclose the relationships with advertisers are not in compliance and also can be very misleading. My relationship with VKB consists of the following. One, I am a fan of their products. Two, they maintain a 5% off discount code by using discount code Enigma, which I do not make any money off. Three, I got this throttle for free from VKB. Four, I did not get paid for this review. And five, VKB did not see this video before it went live. This last one is particularly interesting. Generally, advertisers always want to see videos before they go live so they can request edits, but VKB did not do that. They believe so much in their product that when I asked about final edit rights, they said that they don't need to see the video, which if you think about it is extremely bold, especially with me because I'm known to be a critic and I will not pull punches. So the fact that they did not ask to watch the video before it went live really shows how they believe in this product. I have been a big fan of VKB and already used their NXT stick and T rudder pedals. I was happy that I was approached to do this review because I like the products already. With the disclosure out of the way, we can talk about how we are reviewing this because what is good for me may not be good for you. So here's my grading rubric. First, the product and how it is positioned in the market. Is it compelling or interesting to even evaluate? Second, quality of build. My personal preferences is to have long lasting products because I rely heavily on muscle memory. I do not like changing out hardware. Third, accessibility slash ergonomics of the throttle. I fly World War II and Cold War mostly and dabble into Gen 4 stuff. Can this product support all of these and are the buttons and axes in easy to reach spots? Fourth, software support. I am a moron and I need easy and powerful software to use. And last, how does this compare to the Verpal Mongoose 3? This one is an interesting one. I asked my VKB contacts specifically about how they are positioning this in the market. Their response was, and I quote, they are a non-standard company and that they don't care about taking over a weak product or to compete with a certain product or to infiltrate in an empty niche. VKB is trying to design a solid product supported by powerful software and built with reliable materials which they think would fit either a small desk in a corner or an expensive sim rig in the basement. They use the best materials available for their products and won't use metal for marketing. They are building precise devices, not hammers. Put it this way, they care more about the end user rather than competing with other companies for a larger profit. This is the response I got when I asked to get more context on this product and how it would fit in the market. While the response is interesting, my thought on this is that the comparison between the Verpal Throttle and the VKB Stex is a natural one to make, as they are the two companies in the highest tier for peripherals manufacturing. At the end of the day, most people only have enough space for one throttle, so most people have to decide between the Mongoose 3 or the VKB Stex. Lastly, I already own the Verpal Mongoose 3, so for me, the question I was juggling in my head is that once I am done filming, would I keep using my Verpal or would I transition over to the VKB Stex? With this all set, let's begin the actual review. The Stex is a modular throttle that comes in four different layouts, the Mini, Mini Plus, Standard, and Max. This is very unique and compelling. Most throttles in the market come as a one and done with, as far as I know, no ability to upgrade them. Simulators are an expensive hobby and sometimes you are short on cash but need a peripheral and sometimes you box yourself into a lower tier of equipment because you did not have the money at the time. VKB does a great thing by allowing you to enter their ecosystem and build further into it. 
you could start with the Mini and over time buy the individual upgrades to turn a Mini into a Mini Plus or a Standard or the Max. This is extremely compelling, but it doesn't stop there. VKB goes to the next step to allow you to customize your individual buttons. The Standard ships with an accessory magazine that contains detents and alternative buttons. Each button on the stick has screws that you can take out and replace the default button with one of your own choice. Maybe there's a single button that only has one depress option and you want to swap that out with a five-way button, no problem. Just pop it out and pop the alternative one in. But again, VKB doesn't stop there because you can customize things even further with their detent system, which is actually really easy to use. A lot of the throttles have detent systems, but I have typically shied away from using them and this detent system was so easy to use that I'm actually utilizing it. The way this works is that with the standard package, you have multiple detent frames that you can mount detents to. Once you program them into the software, you can physically swap between them in about 30 seconds and flip a physical button over to tell your throttle you have switched over and then the curves will adjust for the right detent. Simple and easy, which allows for flexibility for people that fly a lot of different airframes. If you want to see exactly how it works, the VKB tutorial videos do a wonderful job of, of taking you through it step by step. If a monkey like me can do it, so can you. The modularity of the product makes this unique and compelling as you can tailor this to your liking and it allows this to be accessible to people who are still easing their way into peripherals. You may want a standard but can't afford one today so you get the mini and upgrade into it over time. So in short, it's not even fair to compare this concept with other throttles. When you buy the Stex, you will buy into an ecosystem. You aren't just buying a one and done throttle. Overall, the build quality to me seems solid. It feels sturdy and has a decent amount of weight to it. My bathroom weight scale requires human touch to stay on, so I could not weigh this thing, but I would guess that it comes in around six or seven pounds. Additionally, most of the build is made out of plastics, which I think is good. I know a lot of people go back and forth on metal versus plastic, but I put a larger emphasis on what the innards are made up of. VKB is a long proponent of using screws and not glue for their interiors, and this is a good thing as it is a higher quality and it allows for more flexibility for repairs or customizations. These things are made to be opened up. I am not a hardware expert, so I'm going to put the least amount of emphasis on this part of the review but my experience with using two other VKB products is that they last. I just got this throttle and this review is coming soon after, but if this matches up with my experience with the other VKB products, this thing will last. And I can say definitively that my VKB products have held up longer than my Verpal ones. Additionally, any time I have ever run into with VKB, with VKB, their support is fantastic. I broke a wire one time by accident and they sent me a replacement one no questions asked and I use standard support. This isn't them treating me differently because I have a YouTube channel. So we have a compelling concept, a solid build quality, but how is it laid out? The throttle breaks down into the following areas. The standard throttle extension module, the throttle grip itself, the side of the grip and the front of the grip. Lastly, we have the front part of the module, which is reserved for adjusting resistance via these thumb screws, changing detents and changing your detent profiles. The standard throttle extension module, again, is this area. This is my second least favorite part of the throttle, but many of you may be fine with it. I live in New York City and I do not have a sim pit. Real estate comes at a very high premium here. And I put a very large emphasis on making sure things are compact. While there isn't anything egregious about this area, for how much space it takes up, it feels like this area could have been min-max a bit more here. I would have preferred a numpad-like keypad area here that would be a bit more ergonomic and a real flap axis. Instead, we have this lever, which should probably be used for gears, but I'm using it for flaps. Please note that this comment is really coming out of my preference as a World War II player. In World War II games, we never really tune radios, so these knobs are sort of overkill from a World War II perspective, but I'm sure they are nice for modern. In general, when talking with other people, a lot of other people really like this area. So this just may be me. I don't hate this area, it's just I wish it was laid out differently, but the neat thing about this throttle is that they could turn around and make a whole new panel for this area that you can swap in and out. It's within the realm of possibility, which makes this a really nice ecosystem to be a part of. Moving on to the throttle grip itself, we have four paddles, which act as buttons, which are great. 
Please note that these do not interact with the detents, and I prefer this. Having a lever to control a detent to be passable or not always seemed to be kind of a gimmick to me. By making these extra buttons that are quick and easy to reach, they act as nice buttons for countermeasures or for controlling your track IR or signal flares or bomb bay doors in World War II or even wheel brakes. To the side grip area, we have one of the best things about the stick layout. The thumb TDC is an axis that is wonderful to use and honestly, it's shocking how nice it is to use. One of my biggest annoyances about the Verpal TDC was that you had to use your index finger to use it. It's far easier to use your thumb. These other buttons in this area are fine to use. And if you do not like them, simply swap them out with one that you do like. There's a lot you can customize here. It's laid out in a great way. Then we get to this rotary axis. This is my single least favorite thing about the throttle. To make this clear, we have the TDC axis here. Both of these are reliant on the thumb. You can't have your thumb in two places at once. So you have to consciously decide which one you have to use at what time. It's not ideal, and this rotary axis will probably be reserved for things like fuel mixture or radar elevation. It just sort of sits there, and it doesn't have a push down feature. I wish this could be transformed to be a mini flaps lever because this could be really useful as an axis that you can touch once and let it progress as flaps move and then snap it back to stop. Now we get to the front area of the throttle grip. I'm going to ignore the obvious buttons here because they are standard and again can be swapped out. The one thing I do the one thing I do want to talk about is this rotary here. This is not an axis. When trying to decide my overall opinion on this throttle, I was really hung up on this. Most people would use this for zoom axis or radar elevation. This not being an axis was a deal breaker for me until I found out that the software allows you to change it into an axis. Let me show you why this is a big deal and how it turns into an axis. The best example to show this is in BMS because older games like BMS and IL-2 1946 makes zoom move in steps if you don't bind it as an axis. You get a zooming effect that looks like this where it steps many times to get to a max zoom. This is annoying, but in an axis, it's nice and fluid and you can snap to max view really quickly. This allows you to manipulate your view while using TDC, which is a great thing. Imagine trying to zoom in closely into a MFD to look at what your Mavericks are looking at and you need to slew around while looking. Because I feel so strongly about this point, I'm going to explain how you can turn this button into an axis. You open the VKB config program, click your throttle, then go to profile. You then rotate the rotary and note the button numbers. Then you double click and set, the tr and set it to trimmer and you make sure your options look like mine. From here, you go to Boolean, click open a free box and set up your settings so they are like mine. Make sure your buttons are the right ones. From there, you go to the axis and make sure your options look like this. Go ahead and click set. Voila, you have an axis. This is a nice transition to talk about the software. In general, the software is what seals the deal on this thing. Anytime I have ever wanted to do anything with the software, I have been able to do it. While the software is not the absolute easiest thing to do, if you want to do it, you can find out if you know where to go. The single best place to find out this information is the HOTAS Simpit Discord ran by D Drake, who is a friend of the channel. This Discord has several of the peripheral makers on there and a lot of the community knows exactly how the software works. Within minutes, your questions will get answered and you can tweak things to your liking. The software may seem a bit overwhelming at first, but just know there is someone out there that knows how it works and you can tweak things. Again, I have not ran into a situation where I couldn't do something. So just a quick checkpoint before we move forward to the direct comparison to Verpulse Throttle. So far, I am a fan of the throttle. The only weak points I have identified is one rotary axis that I did not like, and I wish the button layout was a bit more compact and intuitive in the extension module area. These are just nice to have and not deal breakers. The one potential deal breaker I had was able to be completely fixed by software. Now, the big question is the $279 Stex standard better than the $400 Verpal Mongoose 3? My answer is the Stex is better. Let's start with what the Mongoose 3 does better. I think the Mongoose 3 at first glance comes off as a very good compact 
and intuitive layout that feels good. The issue is that the wheels sort of come off that wagon as soon as I started to use the stacks. I never really thought this would be a thing, and it's ironic coming from me because I spend more time playing World War II or Cold War, but having the TDC operated by your thumb is a huge step forward. In real life, the US military has forced mini sticks that get used by the tip of one of your middle fingers. The problem is that commercial products copied this but didn't implement the forced mini stick, so they don't feel great to use. Making things as close as possible to real life isn't always the right idea because these are consumer products and not for military use. Using your dominant finger, your thumb, to operate the trickiest thing to use is a good idea when you don't have force mini sticks. This then relegates the weaker fingers to just operate buttons which are easier for them to do. For the throttle base, I had to say that I go back and forth between Stex and the Mongoose. On one hand, I like how intuitive the design feels on the Mongoose and I really like having a flap axis, but these red buttons are annoying that I just relegated to using for jettisoning and this whole selector switch to change buttons is something that I still have never used. Outside of the flap axis, the only one clear thing that I think the Mongoose does better is having a true axis slider on the front part of the throttle. Outside of that, I think the Stex is as good or better than the Mongoose 3. And the shocking thing about it is that the standard version of the Stex is about 30% less than the Mongoose 3. The Mongoose is definitely not 30% better than Stex. And with how VKB manages their products, one does wonder what they're going to do with the Stex ecosystem. If they add more alternative buttons or panels, it could be really a big deal. In conclusion, I am planning on transitioning myself from the Mongoose over to the Stex for my own gaming. I think that this is a really compelling product that adds some unique things that make it interesting to people who want to break into the top tier peripheral market, but may not be able to afford it in one lump sum. The ability to buy at the entry product and slowly add more into it is a really great thing. The ability to customize your throttle with alternate buttons is neat, and the quick and easy way to swap out detent frames is a really good way to tackle this problem that makes it feel easy and not a chore. I would definitely recommend this product to people who are thinking of looking for a new throttle. Let me know what your thoughts are on this review. And if you have the throttle, let me know what you think of it so far. If you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing. The vast majority of people do not ever hit the subscribe button. And subscribing and leaving a comment is one of the best ways to help a small channel like myself. Thanks and have a good one.